All right. So our reagents for making silver nanoparticles here, we have some sodium borohydride that is 0 0.002 molar, and it's in distilled water, and it's stored under ice to keep it cool. So the sodium borohydride will decompose in that solution if you don't keep it on ice, or it'll compose, decompose a little faster if you don't keep it on ice. And then I have 1 millimolar, 0 0.001 molar silver nitrate. So we have 30 milliliters of the sodium borohydride that's chilled. We're going to put that into this beaker here. And that is our reducing agent. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add the silver nitrate to it drop by drop by drop. So here I'm going to show you how to make silver nanoparticles. Here I have everything set up to make silver nanoparticles. I've taken 30 milliliters of sodium borohydride solution that I've been storing on ice. So the sodium borohydride is in distilled water. It'll decompose in water, so storing it on ice slows that process down a little bit. So that's in there, 30 milliliters, and we have 10 milliliters of silver nitrate. The sodium borohydride is 0 0.002 molar. And the silver nitrate is 0 0.001 molar. So this is a 6 to 1 ratio if we were to add all of it. So I, I don't have the best of distilled water, uh, so we'll see how this goes. But it's really simple. Once, once you set up a stir bar in there, you just want to add the silver nitrate really slowly, drop by drop. And as you do, you should see kind of a yellowish color develop. And those are the silver nanoparticles forming. And you want to be slow because you don't want them to kind of clump too much. They'll last a little longer. You don't. So we've seen our yellow color persist, and that also is an interesting historical note. When they used silver and stained glass windows in the past, that's where the yellow color would come from. So yellow and red are the two most expensive stained glass forms because it's silver and gold. And, and what we're doing is basically really simple. We're just taking silver ions and forming silver atoms, but as we add them in the specific procedures, they form in tiny clumps that we call nanoparticles. So maybe 10,000 to 100,000 silver atoms in one clump, and because of that, small size that kind of bridge the gap between the quantum world and, and the macro world where where we see you know that we don't have the bulk metal this isn't silver metal but we also don't have singular atoms and so we kind of have these unusual properties and how they interact with light and act as catalysts that we're going to look at in our next part Here we have our two sets of luminol mixtures, and we're going to add silver nanoparticles just to the one. Go in here. I'm going to fling the lights off. We're going to add ferrocyanide to both at the same time, see if we can distinguish between the luminol chemiluminescence. 